Hello and welcome to In Depth on ABS Television. I'm your host, Priska. One core. Yes, some people call it a mortal face cancer, while some people call it a deadly Ebola virus. And yet, some people liken it to a beautiful bride that is courted by some and yet avoided by some. What am I talking about? I'm talking about corruption and how it has pervaded almost every facet of human endeavors. That is why today on this edition of Indebs, we find it pertinent to take a look at corruption and of course, what it holds for our development as a people and of course, as a nation, Nigeria. And joining me on the conversation today, I have two gentlemen in the house. I have Mr. Victor Silas. He's an educational consultant. Hello and welcome to the program. Thank you, Priska. I'm pleased to be here. I also have Mr. Emeka Ezekwe. He's a public affairs analyst. Hello and welcome to the program. Thank you. Okay. All right. So, and we're going to go on a short break. When we come back, we're going to be telling you what we have for you today. Please don't go anywhere. Nigeria, despite her rich natural resources of oil and non-oil resources and boasting of being Africa's third largest economy, is still being plagued by poverty as over 54% of our populace lives on less than $1 daily as our rich wealth and GDP could not transmit to sustainable living condition. And the cause of those paradox have often been identified so many times to be a result of corruption. Over the ages, the country has been held hostage in the shackles and confines of corruption. It is no longer news that corruption has become a household menace that erupts from public office holders to the floor of the common man. Economically, corruption leads to the depletion of the national wealth by embezzlement as money is being taken out of the economy and stored up somewhere or in another country, thus impoverishing our country to enrich the other country. You welcome back to the program in depth on ABS television and in case you're just joining us this is in depth yes and just before the break I told you I have two gentlemen in the house I've already introduced them but for the sake of those people that are just joining us right now I'm going to introduce them again I have the first guest Mr. Victor Silas he's an educational consultant hello once again and welcome Yes, thank you, Priska, for having us. Thank you, ABS. Okay, all right. I have Mr. Emeka Izakwe. He's a public affairs analyst. Welcome again once more. Yes. All right, so, gentlemen, the word corruption. I would like to believe that it's not a foreign concept and it's not something that is strange to you, is it? Of course. It's not. Okay. All right, so, um, for you, Mr. Victor Silas, when people talk about corruption, what really comes to mind? Well, um, you know, the word corruption is um, it's an, it's a word all-encompassing. And for me, there's just a particular um, word I would use to equate the whole uh, statement or the meaning of corruption, which is greed, self. Because it's, that's the beginning. Because I, I wouldn't um, loot public funds if not for personal gains or other things. So I think basically for me, corruption is greed, fraudulent acts, um, individuals on public um, uh, public servants or public um, officers in Bible um, try to put themselves through to be able to achieve a particular aim according okay. to them. Okay, all right, right, thank you. Uh, you know, you talked about greed and self. So I want to ask Mr. Emeka is the way, is it just because of greed and self? Is that the only reason why people engage in corrupt practices? Oh, well, that's not it. Uh, but, uh, but let me uh, at least try to give my own understanding okay. of uh, uh, corruption. Right, uh, to me, corruption is uh, just a uh, misuse of uh, office of power for personal gain. Once you abuse your office for personal gain, that's corruption. Okay. And it encompasses everything. Because when you're in office, you could do that you know, for whoever, for whatever reason, at the end of the day, it is still for personal gain. So the greed thing will come in, uh, favoritism will come in, embezzlement comes in, 
bribery is part of it. All these things, uh, uh, corrupt, corruption um, tendencies, so to speak. Okay. You know, so that's it. You know, Mr. Victor, recently Nigeria was ranked 148 out of 180 countries, according to Transparency International, that is the global watchdog on corruption. And I'm saying, with this kind of ranking, what implication does this hold for us as Nigerians? Yeah, well, um, sadly, it is painful that uh, it is what has come to be, and it's uh, international, internationally, this is how we are looked at, and that's our position for now. But I will tell you that the effect of that result goes a long way. Let me pick for an example. In Nigeria, I'm trying to travel to a place like the UK. The, the, the kind of check you undergo is different from the kind of check maybe a British citizen undergoes when coming to Nigeria. So you see, yes, that's the way they look at us. And then more so, it affects every um, system of the government, bring it down to the, 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 the smallest person on the streets. It affects us, our economy, our security system, information, and all, all of you. So it, um, it is a painful one, actually, so to say. Okay. All right, um, Mr. Emeka. You know, usually there is something that happens. Usually people classify corruption. People basically tag corruption as a feature of government organizations. But I'm saying... Does corruption not exist in other facets of human endeavors? Seeing that there are things that people can do, for instance, um, selling something at the market, and I know that the price of that thing, for instance, is 1,000 naira. And I'm telling you that the price of that 1,000 naira product is 5,000 naira. Am I not cheating you for my own self-interest? Can't you say that is also being corrupt? Yeah, it is, because you are now lending credence to my definition of corruption, because for personal, personal gain. Look, um, uh, uh, actually, corruption is not really about government business or government affairs. It affects the entire, the entire society. But you see, why uh, people always talk about government is that the government is in control of everything, both the private sector and, and, the, public uh, and the public sector. Okay. And if government puts the machinery that will make for a better society. Everybody falls in line. Everybody will fall in line. You see, also, and, and you discover that every year, everybody waits for government budget to be read because that is where the sources of uh, uh, the expenditure, you know, yes, you know, uh, yes. And it affects both the private sector and the public sector. So it is not really, um, uh, uh, just uh, a public sector issue. Okay. It is. It affects the, 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 the private sector because the example you just gave, the, the, those people who manufacture things, you know, look at the price of uh, commodities, you know, like uh, cement, like sugar, somebody determines the price, you know, because you, are, you enjoy monopoly. Once there is monopoly in anything, definitely, definitely corruption, you know, is part of it. Okay, Mr. Yes, Victor, um, I see I, you nodding. Do you yes, have of one? course, I have something to say yeah, to that. Right. Yeah, reacting to your question, actually, um, I don't entirely agree that if I have gone to the market to uh, want to buy a particular commod commodity and I'm told it's 1,200, well, that's why it's market and that is business. Oh, okay. So you're allowed to negotiate. So I think if, 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 if I negotiate and I arrive at this price, depending on my pocket level, and I buy it, I don't see the other person trying to cheat me in any way. Sincerely, that's how I see it. Okay, so, right. Yeah. Interesting. No, but I, I, I see do not uh, worry. I agree. You know, because <laughs> we're talking about monopoly now. We're not talking yes. about the market. We're talking about where the market forces are, are, are at play. Yeah, play. If somebody realizes that he he has that product. He's the only person that has it. Okay. He can just adjust the price by another 50, 60, 70 percent. Okay. That's, that's, that's the correction we're talking about. Okay. It has now gone outside the market price because he enjoyed monopoly. If there's no monopoly, then market forces will be at uh, 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 in place. You know, that is not, not just that if somebody cheats you. That one is cheating and it's still so, so corruption because... Um, that is how it starts. Yeah, that's how it little does. Little by little. You when see, the person gets into power, the person starts being you know, like that. You know, it's, it, um, elsewhere, when things were better in this country, okay. you could go to the, the, the departmental stores those days. 
you could buy anything you wanted. And those days, the prices will determine the quality of what you are buying. True. You know, but not, not anymore. No, you can go to the market to buy this watch now. And somebody, maybe this watch is worth 20 naira. And, and somebody tells you 60 naira. Because of the, you know, the price you just told you, you can now offer 50 naira. When it is 20 naira, you know. You know, so the, 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 the open market oftentimes is a fraud. It's a fraud. Okay. I, I don't like making um, comparison with the so-called uh, uh, civil society. I don't call it civil society. Uh, I call them I call them more developed societies society. because we are not uh, stupid here. We are equally wise, you know. So you know, you see. But but when we get there, yeah. there is a level of honesty in those societies. Sure. If we are buying anything, the price we tell you. The quality, the quality of what you are buying. buying. Unlike here. Yeah. Somebody will say this, say something at a much, much higher price. The moment you 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 leave, he, he will uh, thank God. Thank God. And uh, go somewhere to start drinking that uh, the day was good. Okay. Conscious in the, in, the, in 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 the, in other business societies, I mean more developed societies, their consciences determine you know what they do. Unlike here. Alright, unlike in this country. And um, talking about this more developed countries, in quotes. Uh, you know, some of them are of the opinion that the reason why corruptions have continued to thrive in less developed countries or developing nations is because the leaders in these countries, that is, the developing nations and less developed countries, they have no ideology. They don't have no political ideology guiding their belief. And also, they don't believe that are actually there to serve the people that their belief is that they are there for themselves. Selfish. But that is why corruption has continued to thrive in this country. So the question is, do you agree with this assessment? Are you in agreement with what they're saying? I'm not totally in agreement. Sorry, I'm not. No, it's a free I'm word. not totally. You see, uh, when you talk about it, it, it don't, there's no common denominator. A few years ago, a few years ago, in 1994, Rwanda, was really virtually uh, going out of the world map. True, that's true. Today, Rwanda is becoming one of the, I mean, about number one nation in Africa now. Leadership. Leadership makes a world of difference everywhere. In, uh, in, the, in the 80s, 70s and 80s, Ghana was down the drain. Today, Ghana has overtaken most of the most of the teachers here. Those days were from Ghana. Today, we are now begging them to. to I mean, we're we begging to go to their universities. We're begging to go there and work. All sorts of things. The problem is leadership, not just uh, not, not just uh, uh, ideology, ideology, or not even an issue of so-called uh, developing world or developed world. Okay. Leadership makes a world of difference. Look at what is happening in Tanzania today. You know? Now, I, you see, the problem with some African countries is that some of us are lazy. We don't use our brains very well. We want people to think for us. We want people to reason for us. Today, everybody is rushing to China for them to come and develop, and, and, and develop our economy for us with all the stringent conditionalities. Um, the, 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 what do you call it? Uh, the Tanzanian, um, rail line, I think is now, it has now gone to China. Uh, uh, Kenya is virtually losing some of the things, you know, you know. The problem is that at times we don't appreciate what is in us. Some Nigerians, some Nigerians go to other countries, some of them go to the uh, Middle East to get contract. A uh, Nigerian won a contract in, uh, in in in, uh, in the Middle East country, for to re, to develop the railway in Nigeria, and yet we are going to another country to import that technology. Is you know the the the, the person who has just bought um, uh, uh, the Italian uh, railway is a Nigerian. You know he has bought the, the Italian railway was going down the drain. A Nigerian bought it and is now thriving, making money. So the problem is. We don't look in once. 
We don't look at if you look at what this country has a residue. I mean, we have we enjoy there's nothing God did not uh, endow this country with, mm-hmm. but exploiting it is, is the, the problem. problem. Okay, taking advantage of it. Okay, all right. Um, I have a question for you, Victor. But okay. hold on, to us. I'm going to be asking a question based on something he said about yeah. not looking in words. words, and I know we are fond of doing that, but we're going to go on a short break. All right, now we're going to bring to you the opinion of the people out there. What do they think about corruption and corrupt practices trending in the country? Don't go anywhere. Corruption is so widespread and uh, it affects every aspect of life. It affects both young and old. And the painful thing is that it's getting worse. From the figures we have, in spite of all the effort the government has made at all levels, or the efforts they say they have made, and the ones we see they are making, corruption has increased from the statistics we read out there now. We are still ranked very low in the corruption index, and it's unfortunate. I think it's not something alone the government can do. It's something that all hands must be on deck to, to, to manage. Corruption. Wherever that name is mentioned, being mentioned, you know that things is not moving well. It's everywhere in all, in all spheres of life. You see corruption everywhere. But for us to stop the society, uh, the, the society from being corrupt, we must embrace Christ. Humility, people know the truth, then that's all. It is only the truth that can set you free. Yeah, corruption is a bad for every, every society because it slows down the pace of, of uh, progress and development in any society. So, and to that extent, you know, it's uh, something abhorrible, it's something that uh, should be done away with. If it is possible for us to do away with corruption, we need to. Because uh, without, with corruption, we cannot make uh, our, our quantum leap into, into the next generation, you know, because actually we lost a lot of time, and we lost a lot of time as a result of the fact that we had we have corruption to deal with and uh, it slowed us down completely. So that uh, we need to do away with it, or at least beat it down to the barest minimum in order to be able to make progress. You're welcome back. This is still in depth on ABS television. Like they say, different strokes for different folks. Yes, and I'm still um, having this conversation with Mr. Victor Silas and Mr. Emeka is the queen. And just before the break, Mr. Emeka, you were saying something about not believing in ourselves and uh, our country not valuing what they have. That is the reason why people try to go to other countries to make ends meet. And so, Mr. Victor, my question is, why do you think? Um, that because I know it's not just because he's saying it. It happens even in the entertainment industry. There are a lot of superstars that are making waves in foreign countries, and the Nigerians, and those are the people that probably tried their hands at those things here in the country, and they didn't have the opportunity. Then when they left the country, they got the opportunity. So why is it that we don't, you know, try to build up the talents and the people we have here? Why? We won't because if I want to award the contract to you, I'll have to trust you that you so we don't think that ourselves we can be able to deliver fully just like the international um the international Community. bodies as well can do so just like he men mentioned that nigeria would always refer to china to come and develop a railway then also channeling it down to um education now as if you see i, I told you i'm an educational um consultant yes tons of students come to my office all the time they want to travel abroad and then the big question is, what is wrong? We have good lecturers in Nigeria with double PhDs. So is it that they are not doing well? Is it that these students are not taught well? Okay. So you see, now, also, there's a case where a PhD holder or a professor from Nigeria would travel or maybe visit um, in Canada and then go and raise his hand up and find an asylum. What is the problem? One, salary. He feels he's not being paid 
very well for what he he, he actually yeah, has nah, he, do you understand there's no motivation mm. nothing so he does not even have it to also give because what you don't have you can he give. give so he does not even have it in him to give to the students and that's why if you go to maybe a place like unizig today some students will tell you they have lectures at 6 p.m in the evening and they, they have waited the lecture has not come he does not meet the time it's not like that in a place like uk yeah because if it's two if it's 2 p.m it's 2 p.m on the dot if it's 1 30 it's 1 30. so i want to channel it to still corruption that we're talking about to understand that if we have reforms sanctions and benefits in place and laws that also end about the like the music industry yeah of course they have laws there against piracy copyright. and all copyrights and all so if you sell there, you produce there, you make more money than when you do that at home. Okay. Do you understand? And so it makes it very difficult to patronize what we have here. Okay. But like he said, I agree totally that we have the, the hands here and the efficiency to deliver at every point in time. So trust, uh, we need to also grow that trust in what we have because Nigeria is blessed. Yeah, we have everything to do. Yeah, let me talk about it. See, if you. Yes, uh, 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 you know, using now education. If you destroy education for a, for a people, you have destroyed the that society. True. You have the, because they can grow. You know, education liberates their mind. Education challenges your brain. intellect. Yeah. You know, it's education that 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 determines how life improves. Look, I went to university in the seventies and early eighties. Those days, there was what was called exchange program. We are having lecturers from Britain, from everywhere across the world. Nigerian uh, lecturers who go to University of Oxford, you, uh, everywhere in the world, either as an either as external uh, examiners or even um, or, or, or just to go and lecture. Okay. It's no more. We are having students. We are having, we're having students in the classes from uh, America, from everywhere. Come, especially those who are studying. History. They will come here to, to, to come and study that African history here for one year. Those who are studying uh, uh, literature, you know, we come here to study because you have to read the uh, actually. You have to read the uh, Walesho Yinka. So they were coming to the setting, the setting of those uh, those stories mm. and all that. Today they don't care about you anymore because you have degenerated. Okay. You have degenerated. So you see, so it's man-made. Okay. It's man-made because we, we started well and we are not growing well. And if it's man-made, it means that it can be taken care of. Well, of course. We are talking about leadership. It can be taken care of. Yes, All we are right. talking about okay. um, You know, there is something that's been happening. You know, Nigeria as a country, Nigeria as a country has been making a lot of efforts to tackle the issue of corruption. The ICPC, that is the Independence Corrupt Practices Commission, was set up in 2000, and its counterpart, EFCC, Economic Financial Crimes Commission, was set up in 2004. And these are anti-corruption agencies set up to tackle the issue of corruption. Even the whistleblowing policy, but yet, corruption has continued to thrive in Nigeria. Why? Yeah, well, um, sadly, like I always say, the initiative is an awesome one, you see. The initiative is good, the, the setup is good, but, you know, like uh, Mr. Emeka mentioned, if the head is corrupt, it's more about its leadership, because now, if I come, um, in, if I'm in power, that means I can, as the pre Mr. President, I can control every other section. And then I have what I refer to as the veto power, isn't it? I can rule and unrule, isn't it? So it has made, there are no proper laws to, to, to assist the EFCC and the ICPC operate independently of anybody or any other power higher than them. Talking words, about the legal system as well. It's basically a case no, of no, I, I disagree with Victor. I disagree with Victor. The laws oh, yeah, are there. Yes, the, the, the laws are there. No, just a minute. The laws are there. Okay. But I think what they are lacking is political will. Uh, the, the political will is not there. You see, you set up, you, 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 you arm somebody, you give him a position. You still go, I mean, go ahead to, 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 to kind of um, influence what he does. Um, uh, you know, Victor, I'm sending you... Uh, this, this man is just arrested. Mm. 
I beg release him. You know, he has to go. So if you do that, how can you demand now? He started to, to carry out carry his responsibility. You see, he arrests uh, 20 people asking to release 15. You know, how can he operate? So you, know, you are already compromising that uh, integrity. The, 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 that job. And so the man will not take advantage. You know, it's just like uh, when you when, when you give somebody, say, you give him 20 million naira to go and hide for you. Hey, the man may not hide the 10, 20, 20, he may hide 15 for you. I keep. I keep fight for himself because he knows you will have the courage for you to challenge him because you stole the money too. So he stole for you. <laughs> In other words, you're you trying know? to say it's basically a case of he will place the pipe and it is the tune. Uh, uh, well, well, to, well to the, the, the law is there, yeah. Yeah. but the political will to implement it. What about the people that are actually in charge? Like if um, this. All those bodies are subject to the control of the president. You know that, right? But that's what so, we are saying. So, in other words, it's because I want you to do this. So, it's more or less that's still influencing this person. At times, you use it to witch hunt. Of the, this person is my political enemy. Go and uh, check check frame, frame one charge or two. Or, or check him because you I know, know the, yes. the, the, that I mean, thing is there. You can bring that that yeah, This is how to go yes. about it. This is how to go about you know? it. Okay. So, you yeah. see. So, so, and more so as as to that, you see, the the EFCC, um, I think, is entirely political. I can tell you that it's entirely political. Political. <laughs> Sorry, Victor. And to... If you are talking about EFCC, <laughs> instead of EFCC, they were told a few days ago okay. that they should give an account of all the money they have harnessed all these years. A few days after, what happened? What happened to EFCC? The place got bought. Just uh, uh, on the nineteenth, on the nineteenth or so, three days after they were told that they were going to account for oh, oh. the money they they have, the place got bought. The oh. same uh, the same agent that is you know prognosing, trying to make sure that. Uh, oh, okay. Let me also right. cite an example. Mm. Now look at the um, Zakzaki issue. Mm. We understand that laws have been passed and uh, judgment have been passed that this young man should be released. Okay, all right, um, Mr. Victor, uh, we are gradually running out of time, so I would like to hear your final thoughts on this issue of corruption. Uh, it's an unfortunate incident, really. You know, every society, there's corruption in every society, even in America, even anywhere at all. But they have laws. The law is not a respecter of any person. Once you breach it, you will go in for it. Thank you very much, what? Mr. Emeka. Is the way. All right, I would like to hear from you, Mr. Yes, Victor. Yes, um, finally, I would like to say... Um, that it's just like literature will still say that yes it, it can be solved and uh, one of the ways is supervision <laughs> if you award contracts you should ha and, and not uh, be appoint people to you know supervise those projects very well you know the judiciary should work to be given the powers it requires to be able to function properly uh, the uh, information section and uh, sector as well should be given the powers to be able to bring out Credible information to us, you know, and then also salary is very important. The poor man on the street is hungry. If you say, Come and vote here and take 5,000, he will take. So I'm saying that we can solve this, and um, I hope that if, just like you said, this leadership, if we have somebody who said, I will stand for the truth and I will, with integrity and um, with, um, with all zeal and um, pers no personal interest, no greed. Okay. Yes, because look at someone like Barack Obama after serving, he went back to his old house. But in Nigeria, the case where we have, if you're, if you, if you, if you're appointed or given the public office, the next thing is that I'm going to buy a house in Mitama, shouldn't be that mindset should be dropped. So, if we get a leader who will take off self and greed, I think to a considerable so level, better. Nigeria will be good. Okay, thank you, Mr. Victor Silas, educational consultant, for your contribution. You. And so, gentlemen, I want to thank you once more for coming to the program today. That is Mr. Emeka, is the public affairs analyst. Thank you for coming to the program. Thank you. And I hope we'll call you, we'll call you next time you'll be here. Of it's course. been an interesting Good conversation, pleasure. hey? Thank you. <laughs> All right, so, um, viewers, I just have one thing, and citizens of Nigeria, I just have one thing to say. Say no to corruption. Yeah, see you next time on In Depth on ABS Television. I've been your host, Priska Wampo. Bye for now.